Hi, this is Nick Maddock, CEO of Maddock Hop Farms, and you are listening to Dream Chasers, interviews with the future. Hey guys, this is Adam Carswell, and today I am joined by Matt Seamus. Matt is a co-founder of Driven Capital Partners. He was born in San Jose, California, grew up in Stockton, and then went to UC Davis, where I just found out I was shocked and maybe we'll talk about this a little bit here today, Matt, but he was a little middle linebacker. He played football, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah. He now lives in Santa Barbara, California. Matt, it's been a long time coming. Um, got plenty of a plenty of good stories on the backstory. I'm sure we can get into, but first, how are you doing today? Say hello to our, our fans and just drop a few opening remarks. Yeah, doing great, Adam. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to uh, chatting with you and thanks for having me on. Happy to have you here. So yeah, Matt and I first got connected. Um, like, you know, I, I always say this too, like COVID makes everything seem either like it was just yesterday or it was like five years ago. And I'd say with Matt, it's more one of those things where it feels like five, we've known each other for a while. But when I lived in the uh, the Bay Area, probably I'm guessing, were you living in, you're probably living in Stockton at the time. No, right? I was in, no, I was in Los Gatos. Oh, you were? Okay, okay, cool. So um we met through Michael Flight because I think you and Dan, who we recently had on Dream Chasers, your partner, um, you guys went to the summit at sea with the real estate guys. Is that right? We did. No, we didn't do the summit at sea. Um, we did, uh, but we did go to one of their event, like a weekend event. And Secrets we, of successful yeah, syndication, maybe. Yes, that's right. Okay. And we met Michael there, and then you and I met, I think, also separately at a at another event in the Bay Area. Um, so we kind of ran into each other a few times. It was, uh, it was Bay, Baycom, I want to say. Yeah, that's right. Yep, you're right. And Robert Helms spoke that day. So did, I want to say, what's the gentleman's name? Is it Tom Wilson? Is that familiar? Uh, yeah, well, Tom, yeah, Tom is the, yeah, Tom uh, is kind of the, the sponsor of the Baycom event. So yeah, he, okay. he was, you got a good memory. <laughs> well, then on top of that, I can't remember, I think it was, Todd Salzinger, but you, did you, would you have presented that day too? Mm, I don't think so. I don't You're remember. Okay. Oh, may, we, we definitely... I, may, I may have done something, but I, I, I can't, I can't recall exactly. I was just looking at, so we were talking about clubhouse before the call to you guys. And I just followed Matt and I was looking at like, you know, our mutual people popping up there and Todd Salzinger was one of them. And I know Todd is also has been to Baycom. The one meeting that I went to, he, he spoke about mobile home parks. And that, I think that was his first time like ever presenting on the topic. And it's so cool to see from that moment, especially first meeting Todd around that time to where he is now. I think he's really done a fantastic job of making a name and a reputation for himself in the mobile home park space. Mm -hmm. um, Correct. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Are, are you and Todd close? And I know he follows you on Clubhouse. So no, we're not close. Uh, we know each other. We've met. You know, we've met a handful of times, but we're not. Um, we. I, I don't track what he's. You know, what he's working on day to day. So I haven't. I don't have the uh, the benefit of knowing um, exactly the trajectory that he's on. But um, I have met him a few times. Cool. Well, you guys are both dream chasers now. Um, and, and yeah, before we get too far down this rabbit hole, we'll just say, if you have no idea what we're talking about with clubhouse, I would say, just do a web search on it. It's kind of like the, uh, you know, the new cool hot app, which seems to have a lot of promise and upside and potential. The conspiracy theory is that Facebook is secretly behind it, which we're definitely going to talk about some Facebook stuff today, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, uh, any, any fill in the blank moments, Matt, before we kind of take this next step. No, let's go for it. All right, awesome. Here we go. It is now time to step into the next level chamber. The topic of today's discussion is Facebook wasn't the dream. Again, that's Facebook wasn't the dream. You might be wondering what the heck I'm talking about or what we're talking about here today. If you read the show notes, then you've probably already figured, figured it out. Um, but Matt used to work at Facebook, which is um, a pretty cool place to work. Uh, living out there, Matt. Uh, a lot of friends who work there as well. And some might consider it, especially, I'd, I'd say, especially for individuals who don't grow up in Silicon Valley. Like, actually, I'm just going to share this story real quick. I'll never forget when I first moved to the Bay. Um, it was me, a friend of mine who, who were, used to work at Facebook, and he was in transition. Two individuals from Google, someone who worked at Apple, I think someone who worked at like Silicon Valley Bank. And we're all sitting at this table having dinner. And 
I'm just looking around. I'm like, whoa, like if I was in Cleveland right now and there was a table with all these people working for these companies sitting somewhere, they would have like people running up to them asking for autographs. But here in Silicon <laughs> Valley, it's just another day at the restaurant. <laughs> and I just thought that was so funny. But um, so, yeah, and, and I say that because, you know, Facebook is definitely a company that's done a fantastic job making it clear to the world, like, hey, it's cool to work here. Um, but Matt was more passionate about other things. And we just kind of want to highlight how he went from this job that is, you know, probably envied by many and a, and a good job too, to doing what he enjoys doing even more, which is in the commercial real estate investing sector. So again, I know that was a lot, but Matt, before we get into any more questions, like any, any thoughts or, or ideas, feelings coming to mind from that? Yeah. I mean, I think, um, you know, I had a great experience at Facebook. I worked at Facebook for six years. Um, I went there originally to uh, build the, I was a team on a team of about 20 people. We built the original Facebook for iOS app. Um, so this was back in 2012 when Facebook had a, an HTML5 based app. And it was kind of becoming clear that uh, we needed a much better mobile first was kind of the, the mantra of the company at that time. And we needed to really invest really deeply. And iOS was the, was the primary platform to do that, uh, at the start. So I thought I would be there for like two years. Um, and that turned into six years and I got a chance to work with some amazing, talented, uh, ambitious, and really maybe the, uh, maybe the misconception, especially in the last couple of years, because of the predominant negative news cycle around Facebook. But um, one of the misconceptions is probably around the people uh, as employees at Facebook and their, um, uh, in my experience, people at Facebook are really mission driven. Uh, they want to do really good things in the world and they, uh, they're smart, talented, ambitious people. So I got a, a chance to work with some, some really, really great uh, great folks, some impressive people. I learned a ton. Um, it just was, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. I, I like to go do my own thing. I like to, to build things. Um, I like to be in control of my own destiny. And uh, at some point, you know, if, if that is in your DNA, you realize that, uh, you know, or at least I realize that it, it, it just wasn't, my time at Facebook was, was, uh, was done. And, and I have great fond memories of, of my time there. I still have a lot of friends uh, who are there. We have a lot of investors who are Facebook employees. And, um, and I think Facebook uh, is still a great place. It just, for me as a career, it was time for me to go do something else. Sure, sure. And the seed for you to kind of make the, the entrepreneurial transition, especially into real estate, was kind of planted at a young age from what I recall hearing your story. I think you have... You, you know, you had some family members or someone who was kind of already in the space. And that's, is that kind of what gave you the idea in the first place to think like, oh, I might want to go this direction with my career one day? Well, I was always a uh, real, really strong kind of self-directed individual, even as a kid. Um, I always had a, <clears throat> I, I, I never was able to accept authority um, in the, just for the sake of uh, an authority figure telling me something. Um, I always like to challenge things and understand them critically for myself. Um, that doesn't lend itself, that kind of mentality doesn't necessarily lend itself to a corporate or like highly structured environment. So I was always, um, I always lean towards more entrepreneurial kind of endeavors. I got my real estate license when I was 20. Um, when I was in school, I thought I was gonna go into commercial real estate and so I had an internship with uh, CBRE and uh, just really didn't like it. Uh, I, I think it was just a factor of, or a function of uh, maybe wrong team, wrong time, you know, just wasn't a great fit for me, but it kind of turned me off to uh, commercial real estate. So I went and did a couple of years of investment banking um, where I learned an incredible amount in a, in a very uh, compact time frame. And uh, that kind of provided a, a, a really strong foundation for me just from a technical perspective and a finance uh, perspective. And then I went and founded um, two music tech companies and ended up selling those. And that's when I went to Facebook. So my Facebook uh, time was actually um, not necessarily, 
it, it was a bit of a departure from a previous entrepreneurial life. Um, and, and even when I was at Facebook, I started uh, at least one other company. I have to remember if there was, if there were more than one. So I've always been doing things entrepreneurially. I've always been investing in real estate. And uh, honestly, I kind of only finally, uh, when I decided to leave Facebook, kind of found the courage to go take what I thought was a pretty big step at the time and go do real estate investing full time. Um, and so I, I, I've always kind of had that entrepreneurial spirit and mindset and um and it, it just it just felt right for me to go to go move on and do things on my own sure and what was that you know that transition phase is so key for so many individuals especially in a time where i think entrepreneurship is you know russell brunson will say it's finally cool again <laughs> i think for a while it was like you want to do what you want to start your own company are you crazy um so during that transitional phase like did you ever have a moment where you hit any hurdles or you got scared? Cause you know, they, they might call it like the golden handcuffs, right? Like you got this ideal job, probably, you know, great benefits and everything. Um, was anything about that exit process scary? How'd you map it out? Kind of just, you know, walk us through your thought process there and really give advice at the same time too, if you can. Well, I'll tell you a funny story. And I mean, yeah, everything is scary to some degree, right? Like you are leaving, um, a, you're leaving a sure thing for an unsure thing. And so you're giving up certainty to take on uh, uncertainty and to embrace risk and to go hopefully create some upside, but there's risk involved. Um, looking back, the, I, I think it's important to, to distinguish between the actual risk and the perception of risk. I think it's really easy in the moment to believe that the risk that you're taking, especially from a career perspective, is higher than it actually is. So your perception of risk is actually higher, uh, in my experience, than, than real what, what really is at risk. Um, and so I certainly, agree, I certainly think back about my time um, you know, exiting Facebook the same way. I, I thought through the risks and you know, at the end of the day, I didn't feel like they were actually that, they were actually that high. Um, but I'll tell you a funny story about when, when I left Facebook, there were two kind of distinct reactions from, from people at Facebook uh, when I told them I was leaving. The first was probably more, um, more, more what you would expect. Uh, there, were, there were a good amount of people that, basically their reaction in, in some form was, what do you mean? How, how could you be leaving? Like, this is the best, this is an amazing job. This is a dream job you get paid well, you have unbelievable benefits, you work with smart people, you can have an amazing impact. And those are all true things. So it was kind of like, well, don't you, don't you know the world revolves around what we're doing here? Like we're doing really important stuff. Um, so that was one group of people and their reaction. The other, there was another reaction that I wasn't really expecting. And that was from, you know, people tended to skew maybe a little bit older, a little bit more experienced with maybe more varied experience in their life that had this reaction. But the other reaction was, oh man, that is so amazing that you can go do that. Like, it's amazing that you are going to take that risk, that you have the courage, that you have the financial, uh, you know, backing, wherewithal. Um, I wish I could go do that. I wish I had something that I could go do that was similar. And so that for me was an interesting moment because it made me realize that there's a lot of people in this world that on paper have the right setup and they are winning on paper, but they may not be fulfilled. You know, they may not be doing what really they're called to do. And so uh, it was a good affirming moment for me just to acknowledge that what I was doing was right for me personally. And, um, and, uh, so I, I haven't looked back. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic story and, um, inspiring too. I mean, anyone out there, if you are, you know, thinking about making that jump, Matt's got a, a nice little framework here. You can follow. We're going to keep, keep digging into it here too. Um, well, actually, yeah, real quick. I mean, if, if you kind of had to map out like a one, two, three, three step strategy, I know I'm putting you on the spot here, but like, you know, what are the three things that, that you would recommend someone do before making, making that jump? It doesn't have to be three also. I'm just throwing a number out there. <laughs> well, 
don't make it, don't make a decision like that you know, emotionally, I would say, you know, you need to, you need to be analytical, analytical with your approach. Um, so you don't just want to leave a job because you have you gotten an argument with a coworker or a boss. Um, take some time to, you know, go reflect on what you really, really want. I think one, one positive thing about what uh, the environment COVID has created for, for people is it's forced people to really dig deep and ask questions that otherwise didn't come up in normal daily life. Like what is really fulfilling to me? Do I really want to live here? Is this job really the right job for me? Um, and I think those are really important things to continuously ask yourself. So I wouldn't make an emotional decision. I guess that'd be number one. Um, number two would be um, probability weight the likely outcomes, you know? So one outcome is the two outcomes are not necessarily I have a tremendous success or I fail dramatically. Like there's a lot, of, there's a lot in between that could happen. So if you could think about maybe two or three or four outcomes and weight the probability of those happening and be honest with yourself, it kind of helps. That's an exercise I like to do to help me assess the risk that I'm taking. Um, so that might be, that might be, uh, you know, the second thing that I would think about. And I guess third would be, um, uh, you know, and again, this is just like off the top of my head here, but third would be, um, you know, if you're going to make a big move, you got to go do something you're passionate about and that you're excited about and that's fulfilling to you, especially if it's going to be entrepreneurial. You will never work harder if you're moving into an entrepreneurial endeavor for the first time. It's just, that's just how it is. You work longer hours, you do more uh, grunt work, you do things that you otherwise wouldn't want to get paid to do because you have a, a, a bigger vision in mind. So uh, I would say you need to do something that you're excited about and passionate about. I wouldn't run away uh, from something. I would be much more excited about running towards something. Boom, there you go. I think we can probably turn that into a nice little 20 page ebook now. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> three ways to, to leave your W2 or three strategies. That's great. Thank you, Matt. Um, now, before we forget, I mean, DCP, German Capital Partners, is really what brought us here. Um, and what you guys are working on is fantastic. Want to just definitely get some, you know, marketing out there and, and let our listeners and viewers know what you and Dan are working on right now. As I mentioned, Dan Kennedy was recently on the show, guys. If you haven't heard his interview, go back. It's co called From Professional Athletics to Professional Investing. Uh, Dan used to play in the MLS. A really good interview. Go check that out. But yeah, just run us through real quick. You know, I don't think we got to this part yet. What is, who is DCP? What is DCP? Who are you guys looking to do business with? Um, and yeah, we'll just say, I guess the, the your investor, uh, avatar too. Yeah. Driven Capital Partners, um, is a boutique real estate, private equity group. We go, Dan and I started the business to invest our own money in high quality real estate. So the problem is, um, you know, we don't typically have enough cash on hand to go buy the size, uh, deal that we really want to own. So we buy a portion of it and we allow passive investors to participate um, in, in the balance. And we are responsible for operating it and improving the property. And we go try to um, make people good money and, um, and, and try and do maybe some good along the way. So right now we're focusing on uh, building housing uh, in, in parts of the country where housing, uh, there's a housing crisis and where housing is desperately needed. Um, and we are also focused on industrial properties, largely in the Midwest, which are uh, consistent cash flow producing, uh, relatively low risk, stable investments, uh, but offer still a really strong return profile. And so uh, we have investors that are professional athletes. Uh, we have a lot of actually more than you would imagine real estate professionals that invest with us, brokers, uh, property managers, lenders people that are in the real estate world. We have um, a fair amount of uh, my former colleagues at Facebook uh, and Google and Apple and other, other tech companies in the Bay Area. We have uh, just high net worth individuals who, uh, who, who wanna place money in real estate. And then a really important component for us is our family and friends and kind of our extended personal networks um, of you know maybe one layer removed from our immediate network of, 
of family and friends. And we, we, we have great investment opportunities. And one of, the, one of the beautiful things about what we do is we have the opportunity to share them with people that otherwise would never have the chance to invest in a deal like, like this. So um, that's something that I think is fulfilling for me and for Dan. Um, and so, uh, so that's what we do. Thanks. Yeah. And, and anyone tuned in can go to drivencap.com to kind of check out your portfolio and um, can they create an account there? How does anyone kind of stay in touch with what you guys are working on? So that way, when you do have an opportunity, um, they could you know, potentially invest with you guys. Yeah, you can join our email list. Um, you can request access to our investor portal. And then probably the most important thing is uh, schedule some time to chat with Dan or myself. And so we can just kind of get to know you um, and you can get to know us a bit and let's see if maybe there's a fit, but um, yeah, go to our website and there's, there's a, a few things that you can do there, email list, investor portal, and, and schedule some time to talk with one of us. Cool. And qu quick two-part question. One, is there any deals or projects that you're working on right now that you're super excited about compared to the other ones? <laughs> and um, number two is, uh, you know, any immediate needs? You know, anyone who's listening to the, to the Dream Chasers podcast, is there any way our community can serve you guys? I know we were talking about deals earlier. So, you know, if, if you wanted this podcast to line, land on the right ears, what are you looking for right now? Yeah, interesting. Um, so a project that we're working on right now that I'm excited about is actually Dan's uh, baby. It's a project in Santa Barbara. We bought, uh, and I'll talk about taking a risk. Um, we bought an old dilapidated office property and we decided to turn it into 23 apartments, and um, which is much needed. It's in a great location in, in the city. Um, and it is, there's a housing crisis here. There's 2% vacancy. Uh, people don't have anywhere to live and there's nowhere else to build. Uh, all, all the land is, pretty much all the land is developed. So there are really severe supply constraints. And so um, we decided to go take a stab at seeing if we could go build some housing. And uh, it's been, uh, it'd be an understatement to say that it's been a long and arduous process, but we are about 80% done with our construction and we're gonna get our certificate of occupancy and start leasing up in the next probably six weeks. And um, it's just been an amazing project. Dan has done a great job running the project from start to finish. Um, has spent an unbelievable amount of time and energy, you know, on the project. And it's going to be one of those deals that we're going to look back on. I think we're going to be very proud of, um, because of the, uh, the, the amount of growth, uh, you know, that, that we personally have experienced from start to finish. Also the, the positive we think that we're bringing to the city, um, and to people's lives in the community. Um, and, and it's also going to be profitable, you know, it's going to be very profitable. So, um, that's a project that, that I'm particularly excited about and, um, and, and just, um, I'm looking forward to when that gets completed in the next month or so month or two. Love it. Love it. And then, yeah, any, uh, any, any needs? No, no, I, I, I want to come on and chat with you and, uh, you know, I appreciate you giving me a chance to, um, you know, to share what I'm doing with your community. Um, no, we don't have, we don't have needs. We're always open to, you know, communicating with potential new investors and introducing what, who we are and what we do. Um, you know, we like, we like to work with people that are, uh, you know, like-minded and share the same value system and, uh, and just aligned, you know, character wise and, and, and generally. Um, so we're always, you know, kind of looking for new investors, but, um, you know, we're not, we're not out chasing people. We have great deals. We, we love what we do. We, we don't care to grow to, to the moon. Uh, we want to continue to slowly grow our business so that we can, uh, you know, ha have a lifestyle that we, that we can be proud of and that we can enjoy. I have three young boys and uh, I want to spend more and more time with them as they get older and just have the flexibility to, uh, you know, be there for them. And, and, and um, uh, so that, that's kind of what, what we're doing from a business perspective. Um, but uh, so I welcome the opportunity to speak with anyone that, you know, is interested in what we're doing. But uh, no, I don't have any. I don't have any asks or needs. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for giving me the chance, though. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Got to get it out there. All right, Matt. Well, time to wind it down um, real quick. The, if you had to give out one way, one single best way for anyone following uh, or anyone to follow up and get in touch with you, what would that one way be? And if you'd give a shout out to someone you've never given a shout out to before. Uh, yeah. Go to our website, drivencap.com and uh, schedule a time there to speak with me on the phone. I, I'd like to, uh, I'd love to just have a chance to, to chat with anyone that's interested. Um, a shout out to someone. I have to give a shout out to my wife. Um, you know, I, it's not easy being a partner to an entrepreneur um, in so many ways. And that's actually another thing, maybe a fourth thing, or maybe the first thing, uh, if, I, if I would have been clear headed question. If you don't have a supportive partner in what you're doing, be an uphill battle. Um, if you're doing something entrepreneurial, you're, that's going to be, that's going to be to overcome. My wife has been, uh, an unbelievable rock for our entire family. Um, she's dealt with all of the ups and downs of, of my entrepreneurial journey. Um, you know, just with grace and, you know, of course there are, there are difficult times, um, in, in any, in any entrepreneurial endeavor, but, uh, I, I definitely could not have been, gone this far uh, without her unlimited support. So I, I appreciate her and thank her for that. I love it. Love it. Thank you, Mrs. Seamus, for all of your support. Look at, <laughs> look at DCP now. <laughs> you, got, you got him here. Um, cool. Well, Matt, thank you so much one more time for uh, investing your most valuable resource with us here today, your time. Uh, any, any parting words? No, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Always enjoy getting a chance to speak with you, Adam. Absolutely. Same. All right, guys. Well, thank you for tuning in to Dream Chasers, interviews with the future. We will catch you in the next episode. Remember, in all you think, say, and do, take it to the next level.